All right, I don't say this often, but this first tip could be game changing. Only thing I want is if you're new and these tips help you, subscribe with notifications on and use someone's creator code in the item shop. Part one, you can check out above, but today we have 12 more tips to take high ground this season, so let's get right to them. First up is something completely new, the boosted scissor ramp. I've never seen anyone use the strategy before. We all know that phasing is a huge part of Fortnite, and this first part has been around forever. If you place a ramp and you jump together right as you're running through the middle of a tile, you will boost yourself forward. Players might use this to get out of storm faster or to accidentally myth themselves off of high ground. But no one has used that for quicker building, and this will be the quickest way to take high ground faster than has ever been possible. A lot of times when you want high ground from someone above you, you'll build a scissor ramp for cover. What you need to do is use that phasing from before to do a boosted scissor ramp. When you're trying to scissor ramp from the floor, look down and right as you pass the middle of the tile, jump and place the ramp together, boost through your top ramp, then look forward for your bottom ramp. I did some testing and it's almost half a second quicker if you do it this way. If you think about every time you just barely got floored or coned off by another player, just barely got ramped over, with this method, you can win high ground. I also did a little overlay to compare a normal versus a boosted scissor ramp, and you can see how much quicker it is with a boosted one. It's guaranteed to get you high ground more often. Number two is the Bizzle Redirect, and it's as much about taking high ground as it is about confusing opponents and finding better shooting angles. Most ways of taking high ground today use the scissor ramp for protection. With this one, you're gonna scissor ramp out, then turn and quickly place a wall for protection, look up and down for two floors, then scissor ramp out a different direction. Then you should look to take high ground or just get a better right shoulder peak to shoot from. You can do this as many times in a row as you want in any direction without losing speed. You can also start your ramps going one direction so the player bites on it and builds over it. Then you build out another way to take high ground. Super, super effective strategy. Up next, we have some sick plays with scissor ramps. You can start off pretty basic and place a cone above your ramps. This does two things. The main one is it blocks off any player running up your ramp but it also offers more protection if someone's right above you. Better ways to block enemies are the mongrel edit, which is an absolutely insane edit play that blocks off anyone three layers above you, and it would look like this if you could do it full speed. Then there's the Thwefo cone and my improvement on it. I like to keep things simple and effective. With the original Thwefo cone, you place a wall and a cone behind you, which really does the same thing as putting a cone above your ramp, just makes things a little tougher on the enemy. What I like to do is turn and place a ramp plus a cone to block off anyone a level higher than that. You can see a comparison here. Then I can keep going up my scissor ramp or I can turn, do a quick 180 and edit my cone into a ramp. Strats five and six are gonna be the scissor ramp cutback and the scissor ramp juke, both really fun to master. The cutback is a good misdirection play. You're gonna start off normally with cones above you. When you're ready to make your move, you're gonna place a couple decoy ramps in front of you, cut back, Edit your top ramp the other way and edit through your cone. It's a little flashy and it's very effective at throwing off other players. The scissor ramp juke is going to be very similar. You're going to have a cone above you and a cone to the side of it. You place the decoy ramps again, then turn and jump to the side, aiming for the far cone. As you jump, you'll build walls connecting both cones together, land on a ramp, and edit through the cone again. There's a few things to remember with this one though, mainly with how unsupported it is up front. So, your entire structure is only supported by one cone, and as soon as either one of those cones gets destroyed, you're dead. So you need to quickly connect to another build or make a push. With this juke, what I like to do to make it more supported is I always extend my first 90 all the way around so I can connect to the cone I edited through. This way I have two structures of support. A more advanced way of doing it on the initial setup, you can also place a double ramp connecting to the cones before you make the jump and you'll have three pieces supporting you. So you can make this as basic or advanced as you want to for how supported it is, but either way, it's a really awesome way to take high ground the season that not a lot of players are gonna expect. Up next is a safer way of turning around out of your scissor ramp. This is a really simple idea, but everyone should be doing it because it doubles your protection. A lot of times you turn out of your 180 and get shot because the guy's too close above you or has a good angle behind you, but there's a way you can be more protected on the turn. Place a floor at the top of your ramps, edit it in half to run through, then quickly 180 and place the wall. When you edit your floor, you'll notice that the part you edit sticks up in the air, which means you're going to be more protected from shots on that turn. 
Now, once you have high ground, here's another move for you. Tip number eight is a critical move to have in competitive matches, and I even use it every game in regular matches. Usually when you have high ground, you're gonna be two to three layers above the other player. You wanna support yourself so you can't be cut down as easily, but you also don't wanna give up high ground. Instead of dropping down, then building back up to re-support yourself, you can place walls below you and stack them on top of each other to fortify your height. After, you'll be on much safer high ground. Tip 9 is a simple concept that I still don't see a ton of players using. Pretty much, when you're ramping past another player, you just need to place a cone on top of them, stop them, and you can take some really easy high ground. Just run up your ramp, turn, place a cone, and you're good to go. I've got a few more tips for you today, but if you're overwhelmed and want a step-by-step -step guide to aiming and building, I have a link for a big discount on my Fortnite Masterclass that you guys can check out in the description. So tip 10 is more advanced, but it's really about strategy. This is something you guys can easily put into your game. This is some pro-level thinking. If you have another player above you, like up here, and let's say you want to scissor ramp up, there's a couple ways to do it. You know the other guy is fiending up top, waiting for you to make a move. Most times I'll even make this mistake, but I'll place a ramp from wherever I'm standing on the floor, no matter how close or how far away I am. If I'm on the back side of the floor, I'll place the ramp immediately, then run all the way across the floor over to my ramp. So now I've been completely transparent about what I'm gonna do. The other player's seen that ramp for like a full second and has tons of time to prepare for my retake. What we should be doing is waiting till the last possible second to build our ramps. Fortnite is a game of microseconds where your ping, where every step mistake you make is vital to winning that engagement. So you want to have as much of an advantage as you can. If you wait till the last step to build, you'll take vital reaction time away from other players and you'll have a much better chance of taking high ground. Tip 11 is a little situational. It's a nice tip I mentioned in my other video on the best ways to confuse other players. When you're ramping directly at another player and they beat you, you usually get floored and ramped off. A lot of times though, you'll be phasing through the other player's floor, but decide to back down and go for high ground another way. It makes a lot of sense. But instead, here's what I want you to try. Stay phasing through that floor, and then chop out the rest of the player's builds, their ramp, their wall, whatever they're connected to. Wait for them to fall, and as soon as they fall through the floor, you can leap up and you'll have high ground. As I'm making this vid, I thought of a cheeky little play you can experiment with. I haven't tried it myself, I have no idea how it'll work, but I imagine that you can place a wall and a spike trap below you, and you'll have the other guy falling right into a spike pit. Could be a big brain kill, or it could be nothing. Worth checking out if you want to. The last tip I have for today is to work on freestyling in creative. It's awesome, you guys want to get better, you're watching these videos, but you need to practice these strats. Do it for like 10 minutes before hopping into games, or spend an hour if you want to grind them out. I've been doing this a lot more lately, just kind of pairing these strategies all together, and I'm feeling way more comfortable with the Fortnite grid, adapting when I make a mistake, and being able to come up with newer ways to put all these tips together. In the next few days, I got a video coming out on my new settings, my best binds, my best sensitivity settings, plus two of the quickest and safest ways to take high ground that I couldn't fit in this video. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications on to see those. If you're gonna practice anything from this video, I'd recommend working on the boosted scissor ramp and the bizzle redirect, but you might even wanna rewatch the video to get all the strats down. I hope you guys enjoyed the tips, they helped you out. If they did, feel free to use my creator code DirectYT in the item shop, it's a huge help to me, or always feel free to use anyone else's in there. You can also catch my live streams at twitch.tv slash directtv. We do sub Sundays almost every week where we'll do 1v1s, custom lobbies, squads, or storm wars. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.